All right, welcome. I have returned uh, for another stream with Unreal and CG Spectrum real-time stuff. Uh, I've got a couple things I want to talk about today, which is good. And uh, I'm hoping that people um, realized I was here. Actually, I'm still finishing setting stuff up. I was a little late getting started here. Um, but surprisingly, I turned it around pretty quick, I think. Let's see, hopefully I didn't miss anybody's messages because I just opened the browser here. Uh, so if you did write something... Oh, there it is. Dave's here. Hey, Dave. I did get that one. Um, okay, so I have a couple things we get to do today. One is um, uh, we get to look at Chris Chris's uh, game production 01 project file, which I haven't really asked him if he's if he's okay with me playing it, but uh, he posted on LinkedIn, so I'm assuming that he's pretty proud of it. He showed it to me earlier, and I was like, wow, man, you did really good, well above um, my expectations, so it's pretty neat to watch. Hopefully my computer doesn't freak out like it did last week or last time. Um, I still haven't got my computer upgraded, so I am still running on the old hardware that has been known to crash, my webcam in particular, and uh, we'll see if that actually works out or not. And then the other thing I want to do is start working on the control rig enemy bot that we've got uh, put together in the last few weeks and the rig is there and it's working and pretty well um, I'd like to actually start saying hey let's build a little bit of the functionality of how that bot is gonna move around so probably mostly focusing on cycles and that sort of thing setting up the basics for it um, I don't really know how I'm gonna handle the AI system yet um, but uh, I, I don't think we're gonna get that far today anyways uh, mostly I'm just going to be interested to know how the animation rig turns out when I start doing these cycles and see what kind of uh, problems we run into so that I can start evaluating what challenges we have. Um, so what I'll do right now is we'll move over to the uh, uh, desktop. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember how to do this. Wait, give me like one week off and I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Um, and so what we've got here is uh, space thingy. No, that space thingy is. Uh, oh no, I'm looking at Dave's one. Uh, Dave, do you want me to look at your stuff? <laughs> I've got the wrong project here. Hold on. Oh, this is the problem when I'm going too fast. I was like, that's weird. How come there's no intro music? And I'm like, oh wait, I know why. Dave, do you want me to look at your stuff? I don't know. I can. The only thing is I haven't figured out how to get past. This is the old version of it, so I could do that. But I really did tell everybody I was going to look at the other one. Oops, I'm over here. Yeah, the wrong version. Let's not do it. I don't want to spoil your show. I'll do yours, Dave, when you're ready. I got to find this other one, though. Darn it. I thought it was all ready. Now I got to go download it. I'll get it downloading. We'll start working on other stuff while we're downloading. There we go. Okay, so that's downloading. It's actually not that big. I might be able to get it going. Stick with my plan. Actually, I really kind of want to turn this into a thing where I'm showing off people's work in the beginning of the stream. <laughs> like, that was that was the intention. So we'll get there. Every time somebody gives me something cool, we'll, we'll do a little demo of it. Um, but it does have to be kind of finished because I don't want to represent something that's not finished. So this week, or not this week, but well, this week we found out how many enrollments we've got for September, and it's another record month for student enrollments. So we're uh, we're going to be busy in September, and uh, the real-time course is rolling out. We've got uh, five intakes now, and uh, which for us is is a record uh, course intro as well. So lots of really positive news coming out in September. 
and we're gonna um, start getting that set up for everybody. There. I'm actually getting somewhere here. Look at this. I've got the file now. Do this. Oh, I've got to make sure I get it switched over. <laughs> See? It's, it looks very similar. I just was like, oh, this is it. I got it. Alright, here we go. And it has music, which is going to be quite loud. So I'm going to switch over the music. Turn off the pretzel. Okay. So here we go. So this is part of the game production um, 01, which is also the uh, ignore that hard drive warning. <laughs> Let's see if I can make through this or not. Uh, so it's part of the game production 01, which is kind of being morphed into what our in real-time intro is, but we're taking away half of the course and replacing it with more rigging content. So this is kind of like 50% of it. And uh, Chris has really done an amazing job here. So uh, some pretty neat um, elements here for sure. So it, it always intros with a cinematic. We're just kind of running through all the different tools, but he's brought in some extra characters and some extra animations here. And he's added this whole coin collection thing, which is something that um, I never talked about in the course. So he's really going ahead above and beyond. I, there's a quite a lot of stuff here that is not actually in the course. He's just kind of taking his own path on it. Got some simple jumping animation sound effects. So the idea is we're reusing some of the assets from, um, I think it's Soul City, uh, which is a free marketplace. So a lot of these assets I can see in a lot of people, students' projects, but it's a nice opportunity to reuse assets and figure out how to convert what is a modular set setup into something that is unique to what you need to do for your layout. So it kind of works out well. And we're talking about how to do like steam. We set up this steam effect and some of the fog effect that's coming on here. But this whole part is very interesting. Where we have to come up to these things and hold E to turn them. It's definitely his own doing. Hey, it literally remembers it from concept art. That's right. This this is how the whole chain reaction works here. We got concept department to make our concept art. We got modeling department to make our... Actually, in the intro to modeling, they model this character. And then so we end up using the character, rig it up. And uh, turn it into a game asset. I was the one that did the animations for these originally, but... The whole rig is part of the course, so people can make their own animations if they want. That was a very cool cinematic. Lots of particle effects going on here. Which is impressive. Much more particle effect than uh, what we covered. Search for a key on this island.
And the little fire effect at the bottom um, does technically dynamically change when you hit spacebar. But it looks like it's, it gets stronger when you jump. I didn't want to jinx it, but I actually really struggle at this part of the game. For some reason I can't get my uh, coordination to work very well to get over these jumps. really have to do is get down to that moving pad but if the character falls too fast then they they go into ragdoll oh all I have to do is keep going or I'll get it next time it says it's really cool to see it in action. Yeah, it's kind of fun, isn't it? See a full cycle of a concept art to uh, model to rig. Utilizes all the different departments. Oh, there we go. I just cheated. Oh, I missed my, my coin, though. Oh, no. I never thought about that. Ah, oh, darn. I wonder if I can just get... Probably just get that high. There's no actual uh, natural physics there. When I jumped, I stopped moving forward. I get all my coins. There we go. Just keep moving. Ah, uh, thanks, Lily. You had faith, but I'm I'm definitely reliably terrible. <laughs> I I got two people supporting me now. It's good. All right, there we go. Hey, look, there's the key right there. So there's a subtle effect here. You have to notice uh, when I hit E. <laughs> hey, I found it. All right, so now I just have to get to the door and I'm all done. Yikes. Okay, so in this one, you go to the door and it says, press the red button to unlock. And this is the part that I really got stumped on because it didn't say red button before, but now it does. Oh no, there it is. Now, we even have a door opening sequence. There it is. Flawless. So that was it. It was really good. I was impressed, and it's he's actually fixed a few bugs. So it's even better than it was last time I played it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And what's interesting about these little games is the fact that they're little like that's a really tiny scope like you didn't really travel very far didn't really do much but yet it still was a game that was fun to play got a good experience out of it um and had a lot of challenges and stuff too so it doesn't take much to make something that you can actually just open up play it for a few minutes and then and then move on
which is all you really need. And it's some of the things we talk about sometimes with the other students too, is like, if you start making this level that's really huge, it's just really hard to like, I think I talked about this in previous streams, it's hard to capture that in any kind of way to show people. So not only are you spending a lot of time polishing this giant level, but you, you, nobody will see a big portion of it because they only have so much time that they're going to spend watching your, uh, uh, watching your game or playing your game. So. so there you go. Nice work, Chris. Way to go. Um, when I get other people's projects, I'll be happy to play through them in the beginning of my streams because they're kind of fun. And, uh, and then we go to the actual work side of it. So now we're going to go grab some of the files we have to do uh, the other robot character. Which I probably should do a little bit of a overview of what's going on here. Uh, so we have a class project. Well, I didn't know it was a class project. It's like a TA setup project within the school for various people who are alumni or not, and anyone's still welcome to join it. Uh, people are making animations, and I'm helping them implement it. So we're getting a bit of a game sequence that has um, this robot character we've been working on through the stream, which has a little bit of animation now. We also have a character that runs around that we're working on in the open sessions. It has a cool little kick sequence and the punch sequence, which we're working on polishing. We have uh, a jump sequence, which we're working on. And we have a flying scene that can actually do a special flying attack. So a bunch of animations ready. Uh, lots of different things we still have to work on, like, um, well, polish, but also like, what are we actually able to attack with? If we're doing this, is there gonna be like a particle effect? If I'm flying, is there different kind of control schemes for it? Uh, if I'm attacking, where's my collision range, my hit range, and all that kind of things? Uh, I have to get rid of the guns on the below the character. I can't actually, for some reason, figure out how to do that yet. It seems so simple, but I don't know. They're, those meshes are hidden somewhere, and I can't figure out yet where, how they're getting um, brought in every time. And then uh, we've got to add the rest of the textures, which is fine. They're all part of the Figgins rig that uh, we have purchased. So um, I can get that working. But all we're talking about today is, uh, or all we've been working with in the streams is this uh, character, which uh, has the ability to fly, but also walk. So we're going to do a few things to, um, to try to implement a bit of it. I don't know if we can... The flying is a bit wild and crazy, uh, especially when you talk about AI. Uh, I know there's some pretty good AI type of components that you can work with. That's part of the framework that game design has. And uh, I might need to research that before I get too deep into trying to do my own stuff. Because it's pretty complicated to write your own AI wiring inside of Unreal, even though they have a really like visual-based node-based wiring system for it. It's a very, very slow slog, and I'm not very well practiced in that area. We do actually have it covered in that game production course, um, which I didn't really highlight, actually, when I was running through it. There was a character that was walking around, and then when you walked up to them, they looked at you. I forgot to uh, pay attention to that. Dave says, I can help you with the AI in the framework. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks, Dave. I have documentation as well if you need to send it over. Yeah, yes, I definitely will want to know as much about that as I can. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll we'll talk about that during the open sessions because that might help a lot of game design people too. And then relay whatever it is that we're figuring out over to our streams here. Um, so today I, I uh, I'm going to work on these animations and try to get a sense of what kind of character movement we have. Uh, I'm trying to get the students to make animations for it, but. Um, I, I actually don't even know if the rig is very good or not. So I did do the one animation just to try it out, and I didn't spend a lot of time on it. So uh, there is some issues. So we might be going back to the the rig control rig a bit. Um, 
to get used to that uh, to to make some corrections or something. I'm looking for this cinematic over here. Yeah, it, it would be kind of cool to talk about AI, especially in the sense of like an easy to implement side of it, not like a let's get into the deep mathematics of how to do really smart AI. Let's just it'd be nice to cover something that's like, hey, how do we get something to work just so that it works? And then you have something that works and then you move into like, OK, well, how can we make it do a little bit more fun things? Um, this animation here was just built through uh, sequencer, this sequencer file, in fact. So these are all the keys that I put in. To make it move uh, you can just grab the object and because it's a control rig all these are uh, assets that you can manipulate and these little wing things are uh, moving dynamically actually I have auto key on so I, everything I switch is gonna start manipulating how it works now the problem that I was talking about earlier was that you know even though it's pretty cool that they've got this little shake that happens on those wings um, once I try to convert these animations into like a game cycle, I have to bake in the motion, which means I'm also baking in the joint placement and I don't have the control rig to work with anymore. So that little fancy dynamicness that's happening on those wings uh, would get baked and they'd never be able to do anything that's related to its movement. So I, if I feel like it's a real loss, we might move it into um, uh, more of a real-time set up instead of using it through the control rig but uh at the moment it's kind of fun to watch it do this so <laughs> i'll just leave it okay so there a couple of the animations that i want to use are almost in here like there's this one where we would just be able to make like a default idle pose here uh maybe we'll do that right now so it would only be a very very short animation maybe if i just trim this way down so it's just a tiny little loop like that and i would oh that was the other thing i was trying to do was get those uh wings to flap in or flap out i would almost think they have to go up uh so that's something i never did but we can uh we'll we'll just do this first So I'm going to take the small section here and we're going to export it by going to uh, right click on the, the flyer robot and look for a word that says export. Oh no, it's up here. This is flyer robot, hit export. Oh no, animation sequence, bake animation sequence. So it turns it into a, uh, an, oh, what's this? Create linked animation sequence. Maybe I don't know what this does. Create animation linked animation sequence for the skeletal mesh and have its track own that animation sequence. Note, it will create it based on the sequence, sequencer display range and display frame rate. Hmm, okay. Maybe what it means is it takes all the keys here and puts it into just a simple animation slot that I can use to manipulate easier. I don't know, I've never tried that one before. But anyway, all I'm trying to do right now, oh, look, we can bake a pose as well. But I think that's gonna create a pose asset, which is not the same as an animation asset. Let's just give it a try, see what it does. Um, flyer robot, so animation, flyer robot, uh, and then we'll call it, I don't know what we're calling it. It's like a, a sleep or something. It's not really an idle, it's like a, okay, we'll call it a sleep. Or oh, maybe just sleep. E sleep. Uh, put a capital S. Let's see what it is. Oh yeah, it's a pose because it's red, which is a um, basically the same thing as a morph target, but. 
I don't I don't know if I want that because you can't really use poses like you can with animations. You can use them, but it's a different type of setup. So I'm going to instead just right click and say export as uh, animation sequence. And now I got to change the name to something different. I think. What if I just type pose? Or uh, sleep. Will it let me make, make two of them? No, it does not. I'm going to keep this one around just in case one day I need a pose. It'll be useful. Oh, I should have called it instead of a N maybe a P or something animation pose. Okay. And then we're going to, Go back to our sequencer. We're going to do file export animation or bake animation sequence. Move this to sleep and call this an. So it asked me what I want to bake it, which part I want to bake. Uh, I don't know if I want world space. Let me see if I can keep that off. Yeah, okay, so it feels like it's right in the center of the world. This is what I want. And then the legs look like they're a little bit through the ground. Does this character have a physics asset? It has like little micro physics assets. It does not physics very well. <laughs> I wonder, oh, I, maybe it's because when I originally imported it, it was tiny, and then I haven't reset the, uh, the asset since then. Oh, there's a way to reset the asset, but I always forget how to do it. So the easiest bet is just delete it and start over again. But I always like be tempted to be going, oh, how do I... Uh... Oh, maybe that's how you do it. Or do I have two of them now? Oh, we've lost kind of the constraints. All right, let's just let's try deleting it. This is asset you can manually modify, but in this case, I'm uh, just using what the defaults are. And I go to my skeletal mesh and I can create a new one by saying create, uh, well, maybe create and assign. Assign it to each of the selected meshes. Sign it without assigning. Okay, no, I want to sign it. Just let the defaults happen. There we go. And now if I simulate, now it's the same thing. They've got some sort of constraints and limits to them, but they're all very weak right now, so. I'm not going to talk about how to deal with that because it's going to be a slow slug as I try to remember how to use it all. I don't even need the physics right now. I just wanted to see what was going on there. Okay, so maybe I'll make a new folder for animation. Everything's going through SVN source control, so it's taking longer than usual, but it's going through the operation of telling a server to change all its files to match what my files are, which, uh, or at least checking out the files, I guess. It's not actually telling the server to move the files yet until I 
commit the changes. But this is a project that we do have on our running on our local source control management, SVN. So that other people can open up the project and uh, work from it in its current state. Okay, so we have the awaken animation. I think if we get it to a point where the blades are spinning, that'd be good. Now the other thing was I was noticing when I was animating it was that I had to like constantly tell those blades to go and go and go and go. I couldn't just sort of like say blades spin at X speed, which I think if I was going to rig it, that would be my ideal scenario is you'd have the blade spinning at a speed value so that you could just change the speed value and it will just continue to rotate. But what I've got here is I have to make a curve go up like I'm just constantly saying rotate 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 which is a it's you get a little bit of control I guess but it's a lot more work so definitely not recommended and I haven't with the control rig I haven't really thought about how to deal with that so maybe that's something we can look at um, shortly I'm gonna bake the animation sequence to the flyer robot as well and this is going to be the um, animation and uh, awake, uh, awake. Isn't it weird that we do asleep and awake? I never once questioned that. Export to animation sequence. I wonder if it's gotten all weird here. Let me see here. Yeah, look how weird that is. It's baked in the fact that the curves are all like, whoa, we weren't in the right place on the first frame. And it spends all time getting all shaky. So that's not going to transition very well. So there's another good reason why uh, using dynamic curves like that in a sequence is not very good. So if I start the animation from here and then export it, will that fix the issue? And uh, oh, I just realized I can't replace the existing file. That's not very good. Okay, so we'll export that. Let's see. Oh yeah, that does actually work. The first frame that it was on <clears throat> actually matters. All right, that's cool though. That's our awake animation. I don't know why I can't see it in my list here. Is it advanced copy? Copy the dragged items to any specified dependencies to this folder. Afterwards, fixing up the dependencies. Oh, on copied files to new files. Hmm. Maybe that's because I am connected to source control is why it's asking me that. All right, there's the one I don't want, so I'll delete that one. And fix this. All right. So what else we got here? So this is our spinning idle. I have a, a concerning feeling that if I try to um, put this idle into a cycle because those blades are spinning, they're going to be like I'm at a rotation of 50 degrees, let's say. And then at the end of the animation, I'm at a rotation of 850 degrees. And then I'm going to tween 
to the beginning of the next cycle, which means I have to go back to 50. So you're going to get this blade that goes like this, and also goes backwards, and then goes forwards, and backwards. It's probably what's going to happen. So it's another good argument why we should make that blade rotating uh, dynamic. Now, I guess what we could also do is maybe remove... I've never had this problem before. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't think I've ever animated anything in game that has rotating blades that have to loop. I mean, realistically, could be done with a blueprint if you're really trying to do a game character. So it would just be done inside of your, inside of your character blueprint. So I guess that's what the solution would be in the end. Anyways, so it would mean I have to strip out all the animation that's already there, which I might just be able to do by overriding the joint that's rotating it with uh, the procedural version so that if it's not working, then it still animates. But if it is overriding it, then it looks correct. That's ideal. Anyways, here we go. Exporting animation sequence. Video Pro 20. Really looking forward to using Unreal Engine. Hey, that's good. Are you... It's interesting that you're saying you're looking forward to it. Are you taking something? Are you planning on using it? What is that... Uh... What's your timeline look like on that one? Uh, what am I going to call this one? Idle? That's just going to be the idle. Okay, then we have the takeoff animation. <laughs> Video Pro says, I... And I start... Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I'm into 3D animation. Oh, okay. And I'm starting to use Unity. Well, there is a lot of similarity when you're talking about animation between Unity and Unreal. Although there's a lot of differences if you're getting into the technical side of it. But in terms of creating animations for it, it's you can create for either of them. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, cutscenes and stuff. Oh, really? You're doing cutscenes in Unity? That's weird. I would probably have picked Unreal for cutscenes. Especially uh, in the recent years where Unreal seems to be definitely dominating that market. But if your cutscenes are for something very specific for Unreal, or for Unity, I mean, then uh, you might have a good justification for why you pick that. Here is a takeoff animation where the character will actually go away from its collision object and also travel in a slightly angled direction, which is both not ideal. Uh, if the character was really traveling upwards through its collision object, then I wouldn't really want this object to be moving anywhere in order to go from that pose to this pose. Maybe a little bit up, but it would be very controlled. So I'm tempted to modify the animation to make that work, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to go back very easily. So I may just want to duplicate this for a second here. And I'm not sure. Uh, what what kind of 3D animation uh, work have you done so far, Video Pro? Grab this one. All right, I'm going to see if I can get the... Translations. I'm going to jump over to the graph editor. 
Uh, Video Pro says, yeah, with the introduction of Cine Machine and Timeline, Unity is totally the best for me, though. Maybe it's because I've never used Unreal. Okay. True. I mean, I'm not an expert in Unity, so I have equally the same bias on the opposite side. The only reason why I say all that is because there's a whole bunch of virtual production stuff that we talk about recently, so my brain is all like, yeah, but you've got all these things that are going on here. But I haven't actually used Unity, and I don't know anything about um, how Cine Machine and the timeline in Unity works, so there may be some well-justified pros there. I'm going to try and level this out. I really only need this one animation. This is the takeoff animation. And once that's there, um, I think the rest of it is all just kind of just traveling around in the world. I may move it up a little bit so that when it does take off, it kind of goes up a little bit and hangs. That means we got to get these guys to be straight. Maybe I can just control C, control V that. And grab the Z. Oops, wrong one. Control C, control V. Uh, video Pro says, I'm still new to the animation world. Looking to go into cartoons and game animation development. It's really driving me nuts. Wow, those are two worlds that are far away from each other. But when things are tough, that's when you have a niche because nobody else does it. So there's a good reason to try. Not that there aren't cartoon games, but there's definitely a distinctive separation between what you can get away with in a, in a uh, stylized form in a game environment, unless you go into a platform style game. It's really hard juggling school and animation. Are you, is this school uh, about animation? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you, Talking about just like school, school. High school. Okay, yeah. I sympathize. I know when I was in high school. I did not have the free time I wish I had. And I mean that in sort of like a kind of a bitter way. <laughs> I just, I really felt like I, uh, I spent too much time in my high school. I wish, I wish I could go back to myself in high school and tell myself, Hey, just don't worry about all that school. Just focus on what you like doing. But I mean, I didn't really do well in school, so I guess it was inevitable that I wasn't going to do well in school, but um, this is probably terrible advice to give people, but I, <laughs> but I could have got started a lot earlier in my career if I had known. I just was so like, oh, I got to get like my skills and do all these things and, you know, finish everything and then do it properly, but... In hindsight, it's like, no, you, you could have, like, shortcut that. You could have made it, like, it was a bit of a coincidence because it was a bit of hindsight for me. But the time that I left high school, which was, like, 1999, which is sad, but it was right when there was, like, this pinch of, uh, especially in game development, and they were, like, so desperate for people to get into the game development scene because it was so it was expanding but yet still nobody knew about it and nobody really liked being there 
And it, to be fair, I mean, like, you'd be like, I want to work at a movie place and do movie things. Or do I want to make these really low poly game characters run around in a lame scene? So it's kind of fair. But at the same time, they were so desperately looking for people. They were, like, literally going to schools and colleges and trying to, like, pull pluck people up and fill in positions. And they were like, oh, we'll just train you how to do it. You don't have to know how to do anything. We'll, we'll teach you how to do it. So they were getting like 2D animators and all these people. It was it was actually the ideal time for me to be like, you know, just taking the risk and go out there. And But I didn't know who to talk to and I didn't have any contacts and I didn't know how to get myself out there. I didn't even know what I was supposed to be doing to be able to get noticed. But, um, but in hindsight, I was like, yeah, I had it. I had the skills already. I could have done it. Could have got in there. Could have made it happen. Instead, I went to college, and then I was working on more skills, but it was at such a slow pace, and we were kind of just, like, doing things that didn't really need to happen. It took me three years to finish college, and it was like, I didn't have to do that. I probably could have just went straight into the industry. But anyway, somebody would have had to take a break. Somebody would have had to trust me. That's where the, the real catch was. Nobody would have been like, oh, I'll take this high school kid who has zero experience and hasn't gone to college. And see if they actually work well that was the that was what was always going to stop me but if I had worked on enough demo reels and enough content and really put myself straight on that only and then went straight to the industry I probably could have skipped this the college phase but it was a tough call because of you know hindsight's always 2020 and I still made it in the industry in the end not like it didn't work out it's just that uh, took a few more years than it probably needed to However, the guy I went to college with is the guy that uh, co-owns CG Spectrum. So sometimes things work out in unexpected ways. Um, Video Pro, I wish that happens in, in Nigeria. Oh man, that's a tough, <laughs> that's a tough spot to start in. Nigerians hardly see game development and animation as a thing. Yeah, no, I hear you. That's. It's not where I usually talk about when I'm talking about video game development. Major goal for now is to be a better animator and I'll have to forfeit game development. Well, the good thing is there's never been cheaper to get um, get your skills set in the uh, industry nowadays. When I was a kid, it was tough to get anything. You couldn't get access to software. Anytime you wanted to learn how to do something, you have to go to the bookstore and buy books. And uh, and you'd have to find something that was relevant. And then the books were really hard to read and boring. And there was a lot of struggle points. But nowadays, it's like, okay, well, you can find access to learn stuff. And um, it's free. <laughs> That's awesome. It's free. Side effects. Hey, how's it going? And uh, Erfan? Erfan? Sorry for saying your name wrong. Hello, hello, welcome. Side effect says things worked on me too in the weird but good way. Oh, really? That's cool. What I'm curious. What is your story? Uh, Video po uh, Pro says I hope someday I'll be able to make animation a thing in Nigeria. Yeah, well, you can make it a thing while in Nigeria. I think personally, it doesn't have to be happening all around you, but you as an internet thing, you can actually. Uh, you have excellent opportunity, especially if you're you're making great content. And as an animator, it's hard to find good quality animators. I mean, it's there's a lot of people that train to be animation, but it's not a lot of people who actually get to the point where they're like, I'm really fast and I do a good job. Like, there's not that many people out there. And right now, the animation industry is is um, apparently really hot. Like. There's a lot of demand, and it's not a lot of market to saturate it. So it's a great time to be a talented senior animator right now. Side effects is doing great. I attended CG Spectrum. It helped a lot. Oh, there you go. That sounds great. Thanks for uh, bringing that up, Side effects. Video Pro. Also, what do you think I should study in college? Well, that's a tough question. <laughs> I don't know. I also am a very little, I don't know if you noticed in my previous conversation, I'm a little skeptical about colleges and uh, the value they bring. But uh, it depends on what you pick. That's the, 
that's the key element. I think that's why CG Spectrum is a little cooler because we we do things a little differently. We just get the job done, get you get you skilled up without all that extra fluff. Side effects: zero to hero. Ah, interesting. Uh, Irfan, Irfan. I'm never gonna say your name right. Sorry. Do you think Unreal Engine will use uh, will use in post production level in future? I mean, as final render. Yes. 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 Although I think when I was talking to William Fouché, he's like he's saying it's probably a well a while away before we get to matched quality render final render output. Uh, that um, especially like dealing with blemishes and render quality uh, and some of the imperfections that come out with a final render that you would need to deal with if you're dealing with like IMAX resolution or something uh, off of a you know Unreal Engine. So there's a lot of reconstruction of how you would actually build the rendering to be able to produce that kind of image quality. But it's giving you real-time, excellent image quality in the meantime. So to get it to be at the same level or better than what is currently out there from the high high level production, I think it's got a ways to go. But in terms of 90% of the stuff that we need to worry about, it can produce these results so fast that the money savings of render time will easily outweigh the um, the that you know 10% concern about uh, blemishes and stuff, especially when you're talking about um, production timelines and all that stuff. So the the I think the biggest friction point right now is more uh, trying to figure out how to get things like animation rigs and stuff in game engines and get that pipeline all set up so that it's it's a commonplace thing because it's a different completely different pipeline than traditional production so I think that's where the struggle is but um, Unreal Engine is making a massive effort 4.27 has abundantly clear that they focused on uh, rendering quality and uh, cinematic production and then Unreal 5 has the beginning state of an excellent uh, image quality as well but they're really focusing on games first and then they're going to bring it into more film afterwards but I totally believe that post-production in from uh, final images from Unreal is is a thing that's coming side effects uh, long story short I worked on replicas of Predator Weapons for Hollywood Collectibles Group and I was hired from Elm Studios. You worked on replicas of Predator Weapons. Wow, that's a pretty interesting starting point. And then you're hired at Elm Studios, which is, what were you doing at Elm Studios? Oh, here we've got more. Also working on one more secret project. Ooh, secret projects are the best. Nothing like NDAs. What is Elm Studios? I don't even know what Elm Studios is, so sorry for my ignorance here. Do they, uh... I'm looking for a good page that explains it, but I don't know if I can find one easily. Um... English is not my native language. No worries. Oh, here we go. Here's some cool images from Elm Studios. So are you, uh, are you always working on physical? Oh, the website changed. Are you always working on like physical props? Is that the, uh, is that where most of this comes from? That is a very unique job set for sure there isn't a lot of people in this world that uh do those things very awesome i'm actually really interested in how you got into the replicas of predator weapons like were you doing that on your own or were you just like or hollywood collectibles group is that like a what is that <laughs> 
Uh, I gotta get Hollywood right. Hollywood collectibles group. So is this like a, a website that sells like a Etsy or something? Also sculpt digitally. Nice. Oh yeah. Well, I, do you? I'm. Here's a question. Do you find that since you're the kind of person that likes doing hands-on stuff, is your experience going digital, uh, digital sculpting? Did that? Uh, was that a good experience? They are businessmen. Your friend says, I saw a Korean studio used Unreal Engine for pre-production like Previz for their Netflix film. Yeah, that now that makes sense. That's a good use of a real-time engine for sure right now. I mean, they started to prefer doing Previz inside of Unreal, and in the years, we will see more like that. Yeah, I, I think so for sure. All right, see you, Video Pro. Have a good night. It's probably pretty late over there. Um, uh, just to finish the previous thought, it's, it's definitely like, uh, where you can get your most amount of bang for your buck. You're getting the image quality and the color and the, and the graphics that you want to do to be able to tell the story quickly. And, uh, the turnaround time is really fast. So I feel like you would almost go from a previs and then just continue on creating final to your final like if once you get that pipeline really down you could just keep going that way but it's a struggle to get that uh high level pipeline inside a game engine and i know from experience it's like the conversion is always really difficult and on, and this is why like the control rig is very cool yet not finished but still really cool that it might um, help alleviate one of the biggest hurdles is like trying to get animations to go from one point to the next without having this very elaborate and complex pipeline. Side effects, it's great to be honest. I got traditional knowledge. Now we're talking about sculpting and ZBrush, I think. Uh, so you're taking your traditional knowledge. But digital helped me to f make hard surface so I can do 3D print. Ah, okay interesting way that you took it and then you went back to physical again cool uh video pro says gonna check out more videos on your channel yes it's 1 a.m <laughs> yes that makes sense yeah for sure we got tons of video content out there help yourself uh air fan says i hope uh, they will also choose instead of pre-production, but also post-production. Yes. Exactly what we were talking about. I mean, post-production to a point where it's, um, I mean, you get into, even in the current state, like you do, uh, render passes still. I mean, you would, you'd want to keep that, maintain that render pass pipeline so that you would take it to a, Bossing software like Nuke or something so that you can still interlace complex scenes and stuff to your final images and do all the proper final image finaling and color correcting and everything. But uh, but to be able to produce those re render passes can be done so much quicker. You could really get uh, an improvement. But and sort of some of the stuff that Will was talking about is just getting those render passes and the, the clarity of those. Um, of the uh, alpha channels and the way that it it cuts out the uh, passes has to be precise otherwise you um, you add extra noise and, and interference and stuff in your passes this is what I'm under uh, I'm not a compositing guy so I'm just sort of trying to piece it together in my head side effects I'm a traditional sculptor but enhances it with digital yeah that's see that's pretty cool and I get it I can definitely see how that can be a complement to your skill set and uh you know especially when you're printing it and, and incorporating it into a physical thing there's probably lots of opened possibilities uh same has howard senft but he's a veteran 
and I'm a newbie compared to him. Yeah, these are old school skills. All this physical stuff. I mean, I don't know how many people are from in that industry are still around from back in the day, but like in the 80s when it was all like everybody was making puppeteering and all that kind of thing, that was uh those were the heydays. And I, as far as I know, they still do lots of it, but to get that real world feel. Yeah, I suppose in that sense, you are considered probably pretty lucky because you're bringing in, you're coming in with a, a bunch of veterans and able to find a place for yourself. Pure magic. Wow, it sounds very elusive to get into home studios. Well, I'm sure some of these veterans are probably retiring soon too, so maybe opportunities are coming around. That's awesome, though. I'm really happy to hear that uh, that you're uh, you're finding some success there. Are you finding the work is pretty busy right now? Is there a lot of uh, industry effects and stuff in that in that particular department? Well, I have a whole bunch of questions. Like, what is it that you make on a regular basis? Is it for like entertainment purposes? Like people want, are asking for specific things or is it for like film production or all kinds of interesting questions. Check this out. There is, uh oh, if you're trying to send me a link, I'm probably not gonna be able to get it. You can send me an invalid link and I can piece it together for you. All right, finally got my little animation sequence here done. Export this as the takeoff. Um, bake animation sequence, fire. I make what they want, but it's basically that horror is selling like crazy. Ah, that makes sense. And are they using it to like, give a physical a real physical object in the shot is that the idea that you would want it not to be digital but like actually have the sense that it's definitely existing in the real world oh okay i will search that that's what you're asking for oh wait that's not what i wanted oh here it is This seem like horror is its common theme here. These are good. Are they all from the same artist? I feel like uh, this is where a wax museum would hire people to uh, make their wax statues. Uh, check videos. Why do I not have options for videos? Oh, they're there. interesting um yes friend says i think unreal engine has to separate into games and film production i don't want to specialize in games i want to make realistic films inside of unreal 
Well, I think the answer to that is there is a lot of crossover when you get into real-time development. I just don't think it's going to be one and the other. And if it is one and the other, they're both going to suffer, I think, because they kind of need each other to help. One is really focusing on optimizing and making sure that things are fast, and the other one's really focusing on quality and making sure it looks good. So together they kind of pull each other in the opposite directions, which allows you to have fast and good looking final images, which I think is what makes it so special. Um, it's a replica, he uses ZBrush. Check the videos or type in his name in YouTube. I think I've done that. Am I in the wrong place maybe? No, I think I'm in the right place. I missed the first part. Oh no, I gotta go back. Hold on. We got something going on here. We've got a sculpt inside of ZBrush. We got details. And then how is this working? What's he doing here? How does he get from that point to that point? Oh, he's building the print mold with all the support system. So he prints it and then he puts the cast for it and that gives you a 3d sculpt and it's all about the makeup after that I guess one bust is five thousand dollars or plus yeah no kidding right I'm sure this is like a fair bit of work And not even the work per hour, it's the the years of practice to get that quality, right? That's that's really where it comes into play. And I think that's an important factor to keep in mind. You know, anytime you have somebody who's spent a lifetime practicing and being able to provide something that no one else can provide, you really have to appreciate the fact that, you know, there's a cost involved there. This is pretty good. It's definitely got the facial anatomy right. <laughs> like, especially when you put the face makeup on, it's like, yeah, that it's unquestionable. There's no uncanniness there. It's pretty cool. And I, I'm not even someone who's doing a very good job of appreciating because I don't have a lot of uh, experience in that side of it of development. Uh, fly. Oh, take off. If I says, honestly, I was scared how many, oh, you know what? I forgot to lose my music back on. It was like three years ago. Uh, I was scared to how many things they were to learn. Oh, and I should also turn off my desktop audio. Um, yeah, well, what is that like 12 skills at once? You gotta like get your sculpting skills and you gotta get your physical skills and your painting skills and your color fabrics. I mean, there's, there's a ton of stuff going on there for sure. Check Kalsi. Kalsi? Kaliz? All right, one more. I can just find my search link here. Painting is what stops many sculptors. Yeah, I don't think I'm on the right one, am I? I'm just somebody's. This looks like it.
Yes. <laughs> this is looking like it's going a lot better. It's interesting that you're talking about how painting stops a lot of sculptors because it's true. It really is a different dynamic. And I think that happens with concept art as well. They kind of get into a, you know, you're doing your 2D, you know, you're doing your black and white pencil drawings and pen drawings and ink drawings. And they're, you know, it's just a, a two image or a two color system and maybe some grays and stuff. But then once you put that color into it, it's, it, it, it's a whole different challenge where you're, now you got to get practice with color matching and color and you know light and how it casts and shadows and blending colors and so it's uh oh, we're getting into teeth you have to model the teeth from scratch the thing with like the common thing that I've always heard about when we do production is like you have your preset models of teeth you just start from like you don't have to you don't usually model them from scratch every time now those details really do make a difference though, don't they cool twenty six layers of airbrush paint for Hellraiser for example you make a it in resin silicone is different because it's soaking up the paint or something or what uh, looks like I, I must have already exported it let's keep rolling here what do we got bunker no Save all. Okay, we got our awake. Got our idle. Actually looks not bad right now. Got our sleep. Our takeoff. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Oh, I think our takeoff needs to be re-exported. Uh, the I can see the wings are all wonky. I gotta make sure I start from the right frame here. this one again uh, let's see here and um take off and I know one of the problems we do have with this is the fact that uh, if I do want to do animation updates it's a bit of a hassle It's the depth you need to get so skin looks nice and transparent, yeah. Like the um, subsurface scattering that happens with the skin I'm assuming you're talking about. 26 layers of airbrush. How does that create that illusion? <laughs> does resin not have the same... Uh, scattering print properties of silicone I wonder all right I gotta do the export for the idle flying idle that's the only thing I'm missing now
Oh, and I gotta do a walk cycle, but I don't know. I gotta think about this for a minute. <laughs> First, get this get this flying idol working. It's just a short animation, but it has to kind of represent the same. Probably gonna want to do like a little bit of a. Oh yeah, see, copy paste does not really work as easily as I thought it would. Maybe I'll give it a bit of time so I can do a little bit of a float bob. Carefully thinking about my options here. It's basically just the spin controller that has to not repeat. So I just copy this, paste it here. The spinning will still happen. What do we got here? That effect says uh, resin and silicone are so different. Silicone is kind of popular, but sucks the dust. Hmm, hard to clean. Yeah, it probably does. Well, resin is better, from my opinion. Yeah, I don't really know what the properties of resin looks like. Can't remember, but I know silicone would definitely be like a very rubbery texture. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this a little bit in. And then we're gonna try and get some sort of a bob or something in the middle here. Maybe we'll do a, see if we can do a bit of a pitch or something as well. snapping here this is not gonna go well Let's see what we got doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. I was kind of worried if I put a rotation in there it would kind of look a bit wrong. Like you have to kind of do a counter float. It kind of does seem like it needs that but I have to make two keys which I guess I could try doing that. Last of these side effects here. Uh, silicon is just said. Silicon needs to resin inside or foam to keep it in shape. Otherwise, it's wobbly and falls apart. Fair enough. I'm gonna go now. Sleep time. 2:30 a.m. Oh my goodness. Side effects. Way to go for hanging out here for as long as you did. Thanks for the chat. Appreciate it. Um, have a good night. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing all the uh, the cool sculpting info.
All right, we'll go with that for our wobble. ADT Films. Yo, yo. What's up? Okay, let's get this exported. Idle. Uh, flying idle. Sorry, flying idle. Maybe I should call underscore. How you doing, ADT? I think we can just kind of go with that. It only kind of rotates on one axis, but whatever. It's a little mechanical here. It won't really matter. Technically, if it's running by AI, then we can have it moving around in different ways. And maybe we'll implement some of the stuff we were doing with the leash robot, where if it's traveling, it leans in, and then traveling stops, it backs off. In fact, we really probably should be doing it with this character because. Uh, otherwise it would look weird if I didn't do it. Which is great, because I can just copy-paste what we got for the other code and put it in here, and then we've got our character rotating based on its velocity. ADT says, all good. Just noticed this, you. Ah, well, that's cool. Thanks for uh, jumping in. We're doing a little bit of a... It's We're trying to figure out how to do control rig, pipeline workflows uh, we set up this character with control rig in previous streams and now I'm exporting them all as animations and then we're gonna like try to figure out how to get them into um, some sort of AI movement or at least maybe even just a character traveling movement then we'll we'll talk about AI later because it's pretty much the same sort of beginning steps ADT just learning unreal editor starting making a short intro for a music vid but very hard when trying to teach yourself via YouTube videos yeah it is tough short intro for a music video how long would it be a short intro what's your timeline on that final output I'm gonna submit this before I lose track. Got 30 minutes. See if I can get something out of that 30 minutes here left. Um. send that over to source control so far it's about 30 seconds okay 30 seconds sounds good I think I always tell people is keep it small keep the scope small don't get tempted by expanding too far especially when you're learning and it's starting out it's really tough to do I mean to do anything that takes time and the, like what of that doesn't really make any sense but if it if you're as an animator, it's brutal. Like anything that's like more than 30 seconds is brutally hard to do. But you know, you're talking about music videos, so it's it's going to be a, a different time range. But if you keep your scope small and you just stay within that confinement, you're going to spend a lot more time polishing, and revising, and iterating, getting that 30 seconds to look really good, rather than having this drawn out, stretched out thing that's all kind of mediocre 
Um, it's all about, you know, people's attention span are only about 30 seconds anyways. So if you're going to capture their audience attention, then you want that 30 seconds to be really impressive and then have them wanting to have more rather than, you know, trying to drag it out too long. The main video is a tripped out, deliberately bad, low poly video. Okay. So, <laughs> didn't expect that side. So trying to make something with relatively good production value. So the opposite of what you just said, yeah. That's what I was about to say. I'm like, well then, take everything I just said and throw it out the window. So stretch it out really, really long and try to pull off way more than, no, no. But yeah, people's attention is only so long. So I would definitely try to keep it smaller. I, it's just a common mistake that always happens. And you always see it, especially in people just beginning off and they're learning. They're like, they always make things too big. It's that feature creep. When you're caught talking about game development, it's it's like, especially when you're talking about something that's easy uh, to produce. So like live action film, they, they always tend to make their shorts in the beginning way too long, way too drawn out and people fall asleep before they get to the end of it. So I'm always like, no, cut it, cut it, cut it, tighten it, make it really fast. Because you'll find out that you do all that and you end up with, oh, it's actually pretty good. It's a good pace. And it really makes you question like every shot and how valid it is, whether it needs to be there or not. All right. So we should make a character blueprint for our AI guy. I don't think there's any benefit of... Well, there might be a benefit of reusing this character, I guess. In case we ever wanted to f be the floating character. Maybe, maybe not. Some of this stuff will all air out, though, if we do that. Well, we still have to do attack animations. Ah, we'll just make another one. Alright, because so I was thinking maybe we could like create a child blueprint of this and inherit it all, but let's just make a new one. Character blueprint. Hundred percent. Got spaceships, robots, big cities, etc. Wow, yeah. But they're all gonna be super bad low poly. Good to hear what you said though, thank you. Wish I'd discovered this earlier. I'm subscribed, but maybe I missed out. Missed the bell icon, etc. Oh, the channel. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of this stuff. Actually, we just switched it up a little bit. Um We now have it all so that they're scheduled events and uh that way. You know, we're doing the real time today or right now and then there's Houdini from CG Spectrum and there's two uh, 3d animation and uh, concept art we have all a bunch of different types of streams so they're all kind of maybe now been separated into individual ones I think or something I don't know I don't really know what it looks like from the end user maybe it's all the same but for us we've just tried this new way to do it so that you can say there's gonna be a stream at such and such time and then all of a sudden that's the time that we're scheduled for and it seems to be working today, so that's good. Hopefully I'm not missing any posts from anybody else. I don't think so, though. Um, but yeah, we talk about lots of good stuff here. Gotta get it while it's, while it's happening. Uh, let's see, we've got... Player robot. We're gonna bring in our character mesh. So we're gonna slowly go through this process of adding your character oh we got to do the other side of it still we need an animation blueprint oh I guess we can just put the skeletal mesh in here uh, fly a robot bring it in a little bit change our capsule size Sounds cool. Always good stuff when I've cut stuff when I when I've cut stuff from you guys. Yeah. Excellent. It basically is free education. 
I mean, there's no way around it. It's like we <laughs> we're definitely just hey guys go. But what I'm doing is uh, I focus on working on stuff that I don't know very well. So for me, I'm learning as I go, and it's kind of a nice R&D option for me to, uh, you know, I'm progressing. You guys can learn from it, from what I'm learning from, and and we're uh, we're all kind of growing together. Uh, let's see, capsule size. I gotta get to my capsule first. We're actually uh, just recently, like in September, we're gonna release the real time, the new real time course that we've been working on, which is uh, kind of our exciting new course that allows you to learn a lot of these things. We've been trying to make this course, we've been trying to make something to satisfy this type of course for years, but it's always been really difficult to try to find that, capture the audience. But ever since virtual production became such a hot a topic, we finally had this opportunity to make a course that is a technical artist course. And that's where we're going with it. And and what, what's really neat about this course is that we've got all these different mentors for each term. So you get to, it's not always the same mentor for the whole course. You get each term, you get a mentor that specializes in the subject that you're talking about in that term. So we got, um, what's the intro to real time? So learning about Unreal, but you're also learning about the, um, rigging side which is something that i'm going to be working with and uh, john robbins has been created some content which is really great stuff for us i think it's awesome rigging content i was just going through the videos uh some more of the video content that he created today and, and like this is fantastic material I, i'm a guy who likes rigging animation so i'm kind of like ah oh, this is so interesting but it's it's always been a dry area to try to teach students but i think he's done a really nice job of like not turning into this giant epic thing but just getting to the real core elements of what the tricks that he's learned over the years of how to do fast rigging and specifically narrowing down on the important points but you know still looking at it from somebody who's never talked about rigging before anyway so then we go over to the, the diploma we're talking with William Fauché and um, we have Carl Shedd now who's also mentoring that uh, handles world building within Unreal and then we go into Virtual production, we got Deepak and we got uh, Pun, who are all uh, doing virtual production stuff. So we got lots of cool things in that course, and that's starting for the first time in September. So we're uh, got our first intakes being rolled out. I just did a little pitch. Um, I didn't even mean to do that, but I was just I was gonna get to the whole John Robbins and the rigging stuff. That's what I was trying to talk about, and the fact that I was just watching the videos today, and they're really cool. Um. ADT, late here in London, UK. Oh man, everybody's in Europe nowadays. Yeah, you gotta go. Uh, do you ever do private paid lessons? Stuck on a couple very simple issues in Unreal and be super easy to resolve. You're driving me a bit insane. Ah, uh, hear ya. That is the worst. <laughs> Rigging sound cool. Wow, that is a that is not a, a easy thing to do. Oh, Dave's still here. He's not in Europe. Dave's 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 my neighbor. Well, not quite, but Canadian neighbor. Um, but to answer your question, we do have rent mentors which is a form of, uh, you know, basically it's less cost than a full-on, <laughs> it's less cost than the uh, than a full-on uh, course because it's just mentor only, but you would be able to just uh, exclusively purchase uh, mentor time and get their help. It's pretty expensive though, because you have to think about how you're you're asking for time from a professional artist and in the industry they call it consulting and consulting fees sometimes get into like hundreds of dollars an hour so we it's it's sort of the same form of what we do here but it's it's more made for like people who are um i don't know either they finish the course or they need some sort of like exclusive uh help sometimes they use it to extend the course a little longer at a cheaper price and and, and let them have the mentor help there to get them through the tough parts so it's difficult and that's one of the you know the the realities of of our school is the fact that we actually do bring in these professional people but they cost money so it's not as easy but what we do have inside the course is teaching assistants 
which uh, Big Glob Goo is one of them. And it's pretty awesome that he's hanging out with me through these streams. Uh, and these guys are always there inside of our school to help. But unfortunately, you have to be enrolled in the school to have access to teaching assistants. So you, I don't know how to help you there. But once you do enroll in a course, you get to be part of our community, our Slack community for the rest of the time, uh, for forever, really. We don't kick you out. And it allows you to talk to um, not only the teaching assistants, but the other students and all 120 mentors that we have um, within the course that we have lined up to help people mentor. We have like, I don't know, I think it's like 175 students enroll in September, which is crazy. We have an intake every month, so who knows what October will give us. We're really, really getting a lot of students coming through, which is fantastic. And it makes our community much more, even more and more valuable because we have these really bright, smart people that come in and they really bring a lot to the table and bring in these awesome little group projects and start start building things that are um, that are that have a lot of potential, um, you know, for everybody who joins them. Just build their portfolio, build quality of content, learn from each other, and then also help each other in the industry when they when it comes to looking for jobs. You know, word of mouth, all that kind of stuff. So we're really pushing hard on this community thing, making sure that everybody has uh, has access to all the potential they can to find work. So I went off topic again. Boy, I keep going into pitches all the time. Jeez. Um, but, but anyway, I sympathize with your unreal struggle. I've been there, man. It's tough. You get into these stupid little problems and it's just like, I, you just wish somebody could just say, nah, do it this way. And then you're like, ah. So, but unfortunately that's what the school kind of does. Is, you know, that's the whole intention of what the school does for you. <laughs> Pitch King. <laughs> uh, ADT, thank you very much for answering. I appreciate the caliber of the teachers. Unfortunately, too expensive for me at the moment, especially with this little issue. I know, I know. I know I didn't really have a very good solution for you, unfortunately, but um, at least I got to talk about what we do offer as a school. You'll just have to ask the Unreal forums and, uh, and find, out, uh, find out what answer you can get. Although they're actually sometimes quite useful, so answers epics answers forum i think is what it's called pitch king <laughs> awesome okay uh so we got our character what else we got here we get an animation blueprint going Uh, animation blueprint, flyer, uh, robots. Tried the usual forums, but no dice. Hmm. Sounds like you got a tricky one. It's a tough, it's a tough industry, like, it's a tough software because of the fact that there's just, it's such a diverse program that even, I was talking to the guys at the, um, the educational guys, and they're happy to confess that there's nobody in Unreal in the development team that actually knows everything about Unreal. It's just, it's such a big software that you just can't possibly have someone who's an expert in everything. Um, so it, it's you really do have to search around sometimes to find the person that might actually know the area that you that uh, that your problem is. So it's not always easy. And I think Unreal even has like whole support. It's a support subscription or something. I can't remember how it works, but it uh, for a fee you can get like access to their internal development team so that you can get help. But that's for like studios to get support. <laughs> this is not a cheap solution by any means. It's more like a they have that for people, for uh, for companies. OK, 
Okay, so here's our animation blueprint. I'm all out of my chai tea, fortunately. Uh, let's see. I gotta get the character. What am I doing here with this character? I need to do some. I need to do a blend space to get it to, to idle. Let's get the. In fact, we could just throw the idle in right now to the anim graph. Let's see, idle. And we got our idle in there. Then we we'll go back to our character blueprint and we're gonna put that in there. Oh, ADC, thank you very much for your advice. Anyways, I'll definitely go back and watch your video, previous videos and try to catch the next one, the next live one. Yeah, for sure. Come back and join us. And uh, see what, what's happening next week. I don't even know if I'm gonna be back next week. Maybe it'll be two weeks, I don't know. I've been talking about maybe taking another week off next week, which I haven't even mentioned yet in my stream, but I um, probably should before I, <laughs> before I leave. But I'll be back again in the week after or something like that. I'll, uh, it won't be long. I'm just trying to enjoy my summer before things get real busy. But anyway, each stream will be recorded, so appreciate your uh, joining in and saying hi. Having a chat. Here's your blue bread. Blueprints, flyer robots. There we go. I wonder if the beginning point should actually be just them in an idle state, like the sleeping mode. Oh, I guess we should make a state machine and start talking about that. State machine time. We definitely have three states. We have sleeping, and we have standing, and then we have flying. So by default, Go to sleeping, I guess. And we're gonna have to start building some variables here. Um, is sleeping could be a true or false boolean. And then is flying. And then if neither of those are true, it would be standing. Maybe that that'll work. So is flying or no sorry, is sleeping. here oh sorry is not sleeping sorry then it will go to standing and if it is sleeping let me go here uh just realized that there's a animation that I have to go from sleeping to standing 
So this actually needs a transition. So we'll put another state here called waking, awaking. We'll go here. And this will be is sleeping. Sorry, not is sleeping again. And then we'll do Uh, that's going to be a specific rule based on the animation that's going to be in here, which we haven't put in there yet. So this is the awake animation. And now the exit. Oh, it's a question from ADT. Last question. How's the learning curve on control rig? Oh, good question. Um, somebody asked me that just recently too. It's tough. The control rig is not easy, but it's great at the same time. It's very interesting and I'm very happy to learn it and I'm very happy to spend time learning it. But right now it's, it's, it's a tough learning curve. There's not a lot of documentation. It's pretty unintuitive and I have a strong feeling that everything that I'm learning now is gonna change in the next few months or versions or something because they're gonna like look at their flow and go mm, this is either this is too unintuitive so we're gonna depreciate it or they're gonna be like we've got a node that does all that stuff you just did in one node and then you're like Ugh, well, why don't I just use this other node um, I feel like so that's gonna be part of the transition that's happening um, and I bet you in a short period of time, there's going to be somebody who comes up with some sort of stuff on the marketplace. It's like, just run this Python script and you'll have an interface and you push a button and it's boom, you've got like auto rigged um, control rigs. And then all of a sudden that's going to be a paradigm shift and everybody's going to be like, oh geez, I can just make a rig on so much easier to make a rig in Unreal than it is to do it anywhere else. Um, and then me learning all this manual stuff will be like not super important, but you know, helpful because I'll be able to read the the setups but at the moment it's it's kind of struggle I try to do things that I normally would be able to do easily in my and I'm like oh, how the heck do I get this to work and I'm you know kind of blindly fumbling around so it's been a slow process but um, I really I'm really curious to see where this goes I think this is the first time we've ever had you know such a interesting direction on a change of pipeline in the animation world for like 20 years it's been the same pipeline and now all of a sudden we're like, hey, whoa, what's this? You can actually rig inside of Unreal. Uh, it's it's very cool. Okay, Moise is a spam, so I probably don't need to say that. Nate, uh, just wanted to say hi, watch the open day. Oh, hey, nice. And the real-time 3D. Very good. How uh, How-to presentations. Solid showcase from your team. Nice, yes, thank you. And I appreciate that you said hi. It's great. We have, uh, we have a pretty exciting month up ahead. We've got, uh, I think it's like six intakes right now. Seven, no, seven intakes right now. So that's pretty cool. That's one of our uh, strongest course uh, startings we've ever had for CG Spectrum. So um, nice. it's been really solid and uh, which is kind of a nice number too because it's enough that our mentors that we have can all kind of get comfortable with the flow and get used to it. Because a lot of them haven't mentored yet. Uh, this is uh, this is the first time we were offered a course that um, that's gone in this direction. So, ADT has to go. All right, thanks for hanging out. Enjoy your bed, <laughs> and hopefully I'll see you next time. Uh, and then uh, to Nate there, it's like so we've got an exciting uh, group of people that are uh, ready to go and uh, to help mentors. So. We'll, we'll just keep going. We'll see where it goes. Once we get to the point where graduates are starting to come roll out, we'll be able to see uh, how true all those statements we've had about how important, how exciting this career is. <laughs> I mean, I really do believe that it's like, it's an awesome career path to take right now, but it uh, it's also really, uh, it's hard to know because there's nobody else doing it yet where I think we're the we're the first online course to offer this so it's like 
we're really kind of on the forefront of trying to make that happen for people. <laughs> Another pitch, yeah. ADT caught me just before he left. It's like, you're doing it again. Ah, shoot. Can't stop. All right. I've only got four more minutes left. Let's see here. So what I'm doing is awakening goes here. And then that, I need to call that animation. For the ratio, current time ratio, the percent needs to be greater than uh, 0.9, which is like 90%. And then we can move on to the next state. We need to make an animation for stopping. That's an interesting problem. Hey, appreciate that. Be in touch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, feel free to throw questions out. If you send us a question to hello at cgspectrum.com, um, they will send those questions to me. <laughs> That's what's been happening. It's like, here's a question that nobody's ever asked before. How do you answer it? Oh, well, then let me write you an answer for you. Well, me or I can pass it to any of the other guys too. Depends on whether it's my department or not. Uh, how do I, what state would this be called? Not awakening. Awakening would be falling asleep. I've already got sleeping, so maybe I should be calling this sleep. Uh, it's not a very good. Turn to sleep. I don't even have an animation for it yet, but I'm just trying to. I was actually thinking, what if you can just put awakening and then, oops, not the state, awake. Animation, if you click on it, can we reverse it? Play rate minus one. I think that'll work. Oh, I don't know if it'll work, but whatever. Because then all of a sudden it's going to be all confusing and backwards. Let's see here. We can make uh, is sleeping on. That's funny. Oh, I got to go to. What am I missing here? There's a preview thing I have to do. I forget what it is. Oh, I know what it is. I haven't actually turned it on yet. Let's go back. To state craft. Got to connect this first. Jump into state machine. Now we're stuck in standing, which we haven't put the animation in there yet. So idle. Hey, look at that transition. That was pretty seamless. How come it's going there immediately? When I say true, it goes to sleeping. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. I have to make the default the other way around. Uh, edit defaults. We'll make sleeping on. Is sleeping on. What am I missing here? Will never be taken. Please connect something to can enter transition. Standing return to sleep. Oh. That's just a warning. I feel like the variable has is what has to be switched. Oh no, I'm running out of time. Where's our variables? Oh, it did switch it for me. Very good. Didn't know it did that like that. Eddie, hola. You caught me right at the end of the stream, but thanks for showing up. I'm just trying to like, 
get this to a point where um, doing stuff. So we got sleeping on. He wakes up, goes to idle standing, turn it back on again. He goes back to stopped, which I'm wrong. I'm thinking about doing the return to sleep, but I'm not going to do it right now because I don't think it'll work. What, what's the deal with the sleeping? His sleeping is not in the right pose here. Oh, I haven't put the animation in there yet. There we go. There's our sleeping pose. All right, so we're sleeping and then we wake up and go. And then we boom, turn off. Hey, it's actually tween down there. That's pretty handy. I forgot about the tweening. Works pretty good. And what part we haven't put in is the flying part. That's all right, we'll talk about flying next time. We got something fun here. We managed to export the animations, get them set up in a way that they're in loop cycles and then put them into a bit of a very beginning phase of a, of a state machine tree that we can work with when we want the character to do stuff. Eddie says, I love what you do, I think it's incredible. Wow, one day I will study animation and video game development and I will be a great person. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, well, that that sounds great. I love the enthusiasm, by the way. I'm totally down with it. Um, yeah, if you take the uh, if you take the real time course, which I'm I'm gonna try to avoid doing another exact pitch again, um, then we uh, which starts in September, so you can enroll for uh, October now, and uh, you'll be able to uh, get not only me but a bunch of uh, other talented people that uh, in the industry to teach you all kinds of great stuff about Unreal. In fact, as I'm reviewing the videos that these guys are making, I am learning lots too. So we're on a kind of a nice high level skill set for what the course offers. And uh, it's just because it's such a vast scope of knowledge that has to be captured and everybody's got to um, bring in their, their, their best to the course, which is very, very cool. All right, I guess I better wrap it up um, since I'm over my time. Thanks for everybody for showing up. It was kind of fun. I had a nice little chat with everybody. It was great and uh, appreciate the company. So um, I might be back. I might not be back next week because I think I'm going to take another break because it's a long holiday weekend for us here. And then uh, but I will be back the week after that. Make sure that we're all uh, there you go. Dave knows what I'm talking about. Um, so we're back on track, continuing what we're doing with this uh, robot character. So I'll leave it there and I'll see you guys all next time. Take care, everybody.